Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Social Media Decoded Podcast, the number one podcast to help you understand social media better so that you grow your business, get more clients, and monetize. And today, I am excited. You know, I always get excited when we have special guests, and we're going to be talking with Molly, and you will not believe this, okay? We're going to be chatting about how an ebook sold 500,000 worth of copies with zero ad spend. I know many of you listening, we utilize organic social media. So we're going to talk about how you can do this with zero ad spend plus much more. So I'm welcoming Molly to the podcast. So thankful to have you today. How are you doing today? I am great. I mean, what's better than talking about online business? I'm excited to chat with you today. (laughs) Yes. What's better than talking about all the things to help you build your online business. And I love digital products. So this is going to be a great conversation. I hope everyone get out your pens, your papers. You already know gems will be dropped. So Molly, I would love if you would introduce yourself and let the listeners know how you you know, got started in your business and what you specialize in. Yeah. I always like to tell the speed dating uh, version of my story because I feel like I think it's been like, I don't know, 16, 17 years now since I started my business. So I actually started my business as a photographer because that was like my passion, hobby, even just growing up through middle school and high school. I ultimately ended up uh, deciding to drop out of college to pursue my photography career full time because I don't know about you guys, but in the college I was attending, at least they weren't teaching me how to actually make money with photography. They were just teaching me like, this is the composition and how to hang it in galleries. And I'm like, that's nice, but I need to pay off, you know, $170,000 of debt and student loans and all this stuff. So where's the money? (laughs) So I dropped out, started my photo business and it started from like literally knocking on people's doors. You know, what kind of photos do you need? 200 bucks here and there. Over the years though, um, in just a few years, I had grown it to a multiple six figure portrait studio and other photographers started asking me how I did it to the point where they would book photo shoots just to like ask me business questions. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll take on a couple coaching clients and you know, it was fun, but I didn't have a lot of time because I was already busy with my photo studio. And then I felt like I was kind of repeating myself over and over because you know, I was just teaching them what was working for me. Right. So it's really just the same system. So eventually I found out about online courses and digital products and I started a blog and I started out with some different guides and eBooks and templates and things for sale. And I was like, wow, this is cool. I can put this on my website. And obviously I had grown a following because that's very important, but I had put them online and, you know, told people about them. People started buying them and, Long story short, that snowballed into uh, trying a lot of different digital products and then focusing in on a few that were really, really good and growing that to a $2 million per year education company. Wow, that is so awesome. The power of digital products and online (laughs) courses. I am, I love online courses and digital products. So that is such an inspiring story. So anyone listening, I know each and every one of you has a skill They were coming to Molly because they said, look, I want what you have. And maybe there's people that want the skills or want to learn the skills that you possess. So put it and package that up in an online course or digital product and sell it. Okay. So I'm so excited to hear about this strategy on how you were able to do that. So your photography studio started as this amazing business and you turned it into a $2 million business with digital products. Can you walk us through like how you implemented the digital product strategy and how were you able to make that much without ads? Because that's really, really important. Yeah. So really, I'm going to break down the, I think I'll talk mostly about the two products that like really sold the most, but you know, now I feel so qualified to be teaching people digital products, not just because of the money I've made and the people that I've helped, but also because, I mean, you can name any digital type of digital product and like I've created it. Now I'm not saying (laughs) that's a good path. You know, I learned the hard way that creating, you know, hundreds of different digital products probably isn't the best way to get to, you know, $2 million a year or a hundred thousand dollars a year, whatever your goal is. I just was, you know, a hyper creative. I liked creating things, you know, that's why I was a photographer. But essentially how it happened was 
like I said, I created some different, you know, like posing guides, some different templates, some different things. And eventually I created this ebook called Model Call. And essentially what Model Call was, was it was one strategy that I used in my photography business. So what I did was it was only 13 pages long. And I think a lot of times when people create an ebook, they, they take the book, uh, they take the word book way too seriously. They make like an actual book. And if you're selling a strategy, you don't want it to be a book. You want to get someone the result in as little time and effort as possible. So with this ebook, it was just screenshots of exactly what I did, word for word scripts of exactly what I posted, like where to post it, how to do it, the step by step checklist of how to actually get the result. And what the ebook model call was, was it helped photographers book more clients. So it was one marketing strategy that they could plug into their already existing business and get more clients. And again, this was already working very well in my studio. So what do you know? It started working very well in other people's studios. Even like some of the people started making more money than I was making. I was just like, holy cow, you know, because I, um, if you couldn't tell already was having like, if I could go back, I, I would focus more. Like I was just really into creating lots of different things, but the people who took that strategy and just focused on that, I mean, they were growing studios even larger than mine. So what happened was I never ran ads or really did much with it. Um, I put it online. And since people were getting such good results, they told everyone about it. So pretty much any Facebook group for photographers, you could search for the words model call, people would be talking about it. And that's what happens when you create an actually really good digital product. And I know it's like easier said than done, but you have to think what's something that I did for myself or somebody else? What's the result? And how can I how can I teach that to them in a digital product in a way where I'm literally, it's almost like done for you. It's just giving them everything they need to really get that result. So that was the first product I had that like really took off. And then from there, I started creating courses because, you know, you can charge more money for courses. You can, instead of teaching one little result, you can teach, you know, a lot of results. You can, like instead of the result being one marketing strategy, it could be grow your business to six figures or something like that, right? So I started doing that. And what I realized was um, over, over these different courses, because I created business for photographers, shooting for photographers, posing for photographers, like all these different courses. And the one that sold the most was marketing. <laughs> Lo and behold, my other ebook also was marketing. So you have to really find what's the pain point in your industry. Not like a, oh, this would be nice to have like a really, you know, strong pain point. Think about it. Think about photographers or service-based business owners or any business owner. What's the thing they need more of? They need more customers. They need more sales. They need to keep their lights on. They need to pay themselves, right? And a lot of businesses, it's not just a nice to have more clients, like they need that next client, right? So think about what's that pain point. So what I ended up doing was going all in on model call and the marketing course. And that is what scaled us to $2 million a year. I had a mentor who told me, uh, I, I approached him and I said, I can't get past, I think it was $500,000 a year. And I'm like, I keep creating all these products. I keep creating all these products. And I just can't. And he's like, you need to actually retire all these products and just focus on the one or two that are bringing in all the sales and then scale from there. Now, even though I didn't run ads to the ebook, I did run ads to the course. So I can't say I got to $2 million a year without ads, but I did get to 500K with the ebook without ads. So just want to clarify that. <laughs> oh, that was a really good breakdown. Again, we have master classes on this on the Social Media Decoded podcast. I hope that you were taking notes because that was very good. I like how you said you started with multiple things and then you narrowed it down to the ones that work better. I think that that's a testament of looking at the numbers because the numbers don't lie in your business. So we all need to be looking at the analytics. And then you were able to say, okay, I want to focus on this. And I was taking notes too, because um, I, I got a really good idea when you just said that about a course that I could create. Um, yeah. I'm already creating a, a I'm like, if you want to tell me now, tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you later because I don't want the people, I don't want everybody to know just yet because I'm not going to come out with surprised. the, <laughs> yes, I'm going to come out with my summit course first because I just put on an online summit and I'm going to package that up. So again, think of the things that you can package up. Molly said marketing, she knew that that would take off and this is exactly what other people needed. So I like how you said that pain point. What is that one thing that you can solve with a digital product? Yes, simple. 
course can go deeper. Ooh, that was a really good breakdown. I hope everyone was taking notes. Um, I want to stay on digital products for a minute. Are there some mistakes that you have seen people make or even mistakes that you have made that you can let our listeners know so maybe they won't make those same mistakes when it comes to digital products and courses? I'm literally just like laughing and I wish you guys could see my face because it's like, yes, yes, I have made mistakes. <laughs> but really, I know this sounds so cheesy and everyone says this, but like mistakes really are learning les lessons in business. And I look back at those and it's like, oh, now it makes sense. Now it's helpful. The mistake that I made, blah, blah, blah. So oh, where to begin, where to begin? Um, I would say the one mistake that we can all learn from is one of the first courses that I created was just, uh, I think it was called, well, okay. So I, I worked with boudoir photographers specifically, so we can all laugh at the name of this was my first course, Bootylicious Business Camp. Yeah. That's like hilarious. Right. Um, and it was like, oh, learn more about business. Like, what does that mean? You know, does it mean we're learning accounting? Does it mean we're, you know, like, what is, what does that mean? So I'm sure you can guess, like, I did not sell many people into that course. So that would be my first learning lesson was even though I had a really niche audience, like not only did I help business owners, but I helped photographers, but I helped boudoir photographers, you know, so that was a really deep uh, niche and ideal client, which is really good. But you can't just have one thing good. You have to have like every single piece perfect in order for something to really, you know, spread like wildfire. So really the piece that I had missing was my course topic was way too broad. And I do see this a lot. I see a lot of people coming to me saying, well, I want to help more women be confident or I want to have help people live a happier life. It's like, okay, that's a good start. But what does that mean? Who are you helping? How are you going to help them live a happier life? Why do they want to live a happier life? What specifically are they going to need to do? You know, so you really need to ask a lot of questions and, and drill that down. And it's not just an exercise that coaches give to you for like funsies. You know, it really, it really does help your marketing. So I would say that was one. And then obviously the second one was one I already shared, but just doing way too many digital products. Um, like I said, you know, I'm someone who likes to create things and that's great. And I'm sure a lot of you guys listening are creatives as well. But what I've learned is to not push down my creativity, but to channel it into other places in the business. So even though I only have two products, I'm going to focus my creativity into, you know, if I am running ads, the ad creative or my organic social media posts, or how can I get more creative with how I'm helping my clients? You know, so taking that creativity, but channeling it into the things um, in your business. And then third, third thing I will leave you guys with, um, even though I could talk all day about all the mistakes that I've made, um, is like you brought up, uh, know your numbers. So when I first started this business, you know, there are a lot of people that ask me like the data of when I first started this business. And I'm like, I don't know. Like I literally didn't track anything back then. So unfortunately, like I cannot, um, you know, there are certain numbers I do know going through PayPal and Stripe and like adding everything up and going back and looking at it all. But it's like, I didn't have the data that I have now. Now, everything is tracked. I could tell you exactly how many leads I'm getting from a certain social media platform, a social, a certain social media post, a certain email post. Um, I use Hyros and they just came out with a paid tier for organic marketing before they only had paid ads tiers. And it will track everything for you. You can use Google analytics too, but it's pretty complicated. Um, but like knowing the data of your business is so crucial because you could be spending time in areas that maybe aren't even bringing a return on investment for you. And I know everyone is like in a love affair with Instagram, but if you, if you look at all the social medias that you're spending your time on and you look at the data of where your sales are coming from, I don't know, they might be coming from somewhere else. I'm just going to leave you with that. <laughs> they probably are coming from somewhere else and we're probably going to talk about where they are coming from but that was so good and i am 100 with you all else are just lessons do not look at it as a loss you have to learn these things in order to have a better strategy and say okay next time i won't do that like next time i won't do i don't know 50 million courses i'll just stick to one thing i mean you have to just go through it and learn first i think many of us entrepreneurs, we are impatient, but 
being an entrepreneur and an online business, none of this is going to happen overnight. You literally have to look at your numbers. And I cannot stress that enough. I like how you broke that down to, you know, where your Facebook people are coming from. If they come from Instagram, if they come from your email list, if they come from Twitter, wherever you are able to track that. And I love apps and tools that help us track exactly where our leads are coming from because then we just beef up like you said the money generating activities you beef up wherever the most leads are coming from for me i know i get a lot of leads from facebook so i'm on facebook a lot and we do all love instagram but they are definitely annoying and so you <laughs> should not put your eggs in the instagram basket maybe you should put it in email and that's our next question because here on the social media decoded podcast we love emails i just got 600 emails in like two weeks from something I just did. So you all, I love okay, email. Okay? That's amazing. Congrats. That's like, <laughs> thank wow. you. I'm, I'm trying to grow my email list to 10,000. So you all, and you said you did that without ads too, right? That's one. Without ads. Like, wow. Yes. Without <laughs> ads y'all. I'm, I'm going to be coming up with some real soon. Let me y'all stay tuned without ads. Um, so what are some fast and free methods, tips that you can share about building your email list, because I'm sure with the digital products that you create as well, there's a strategy on how you, you know, utilize your emails with that as well. Yeah. Just throw all your money into ads. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to share the free tips. So, uh, and, and, and also I don't think starting with ads is really good. I think you need to prove everything with organic first. So that was just a joke, but, uh, I will say, I am with you. Email list is literally the lifeblood of your business. Like how many email subscribers is usually correlated or how many email subscribers you have is typically correlated to how much money you're making per month. So I do, I have had a number of people come to me and say, you know, why am I not getting more sales? And it's like, well, you haven't grown your audience. You know, you have to figure out a way to grow them consistently. So <clears throat> here are a few different strategies. Um, the first is the easiest is just make sure that you have one main audience building platform. So I think a lot of times we try to be on too many, but I think that it's, I mean, this is just my opinion, but I think it's important to be on one of the following, either have a podcast or a blog or a YouTube channel. And eventually you might want to have all of those, but I really think it's important to, to at least be doing one of those and going all in on it. So for me, it's YouTube. And what's cool about that is since it's video, then I can repurpose to all the other platforms. So it's a lot easier for me to manage and my team can help me, you know, clip out things and stuff. I, with my last business, the photo education, I started with a blog and that was really easy for me. And I liked getting started with a blog because I didn't have to be good on camera and I didn't even have to be good through audio. I didn't have to be good at speaking. I just had to be good at writing. So that's the other thing is think about what is your skill set and lean into that. So if you're not good at writing, maybe you want to do a podcast or YouTube, or if you are better at writing, maybe you do a blog. So that would be the first thing is just have one main platform that you're like consistently putting effort into every single week or multiple times a week over years. <laughs> okay. So that's the first one. Second one is email swaps. This one has grown my email list a lot. So what I do is I'll ask someone that has, you know, maybe my ideal clients in their email list and vice versa. And I'll say, Hey, uh, I can send out an email to your list with a freebie of mine. So I'm just giving a gift to their list and then they can do the same to my list. So they can send a freebie to my list. And then we're each building our lists with cross promotion and not only have I been using the strategy for like a decade, but with ad costs where they are now, I think it's so important to be really focusing on these organic strategies. So that would be the second one. And then third one is just saying yes to collabs or figuring out how to have collabs. So whether it's, you know, right now I'm being a guest on a podcast, like that's a really great way to build your email list because you, you get to share your story and your expertise and the people that resonate with you are going to want to go check out your website and maybe subscribe to your email list, right? Maybe it's saying yes to being a part of summits. Um, I, I think I'm in like five summits right now, <laughs> which is crazy. I've never run a summit myself, um, but I always say yes, you know, unless there's some glaring reason to say no, like 99% of the time I say yes. Um, and, you know, it's just another way for me to get in front of more people to share my stories and expertise. Um, and then also this was more so with my last business, 
but guest blogging. So one guest blog in particular, this guy approached me and he's like, Hey, I'm doing a roundup blog of all of the best Facebook groups or groups on Facebook for photographers. Can I list yours? And I was like, yeah, I got so many leads from that blog post for years. So I know you, like some of you might be thinking, well, that's great. I wish people would approach me. If you keep being consistent with your content, I guarantee you people will start reaching out to you. Um, I do reach out to be a guest on podcasts, but I've never reached out to be on a summit. I've never reached out to be a guest on a blog, I don't think. Um, but because I'm being consistent with my messaging, who I'm speaking to, what I'm talking about, the content I'm putting out, that's how people will find you and ask you to be part of things. Oh, that was all so good. Again, notes should have been taken because yes to collaborations like we're doing right now. So great. And I love how you said start with something. And I am going all in on my podcast. As y'all know, this we do three episodes a week, right? And so we're all in on this podcast. This is the lead generator. This is to build your brand. You can have something like a blog, podcast, YouTube channel, right? You got to start somewhere. So I love how you said that. And consistency. No one's ever going to reach out to you, join your email list or any of that if you're not consistent. So those are some really great ways to build your email list, especially that email swap. So I hope people took notes of that because that's a really great opportunity. Um, another way I've seen people do too is like a bundle. We can all bundle our products together and that's another mm -hmm. way we can help to grow our email list. So those are I just really thought of something tips. else too with the, with the collabs thing. Because when you were saying that, the email swaps, it made me think, some people listening are probably thinking, well, what if I have a small email list? How am I going to find? Number one, you can try to find people with your same size following your email list. But I do want to tell you one story. So um, my YouTube is something that I just decided to go all in on. So um, only over the last few months, you know, I'm at like 2,000 subscribers or something like that. But it's already bringing me, by the way, like, um, I don't know, five or more leads every single day. Just, and that's, it's not even that many followers, right? Well, anyways, I reached out to this other YouTube creator who has like three or 400,000 people on her YouTube. And I pitched her a really good idea for a video that we could collab together. And because of my expertise and experience, even though I only have 2000 followers, she was like, yes, let's do it. Cause this will add value to my audience. So don't be afraid to pitch people that have bigger followings than you, especially if you have a unique expertise. So for example, if you're like a therapist who talks about some unique strategy or whatever, you could approach an audience that is not run by a therapist, but maybe they have your ideal clients and they're going to want your expertise like maybe CEOs want to learn how to overcome some trauma to be a better CEO or whatever. You know what I mean? And then you could talk to their audience. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, no, that was a good gem dropped. That was a good one um, because you're right. There may be people listening. I don't have a large following. What do I do? I don't have a large email list, but you're right. You can, you know, tap in with someone who has a similar list or even like you said, I only have like 4,000 YouTube subscribers. I got to go back to my YouTube. I know it's, that's where I started and I stopped and I, I'm, I'm going to get back there. But again, I could reach out, like you said, to someone and say, hey, I think we could do this collab video. You're giving me a lot of ideas, Molly. I'm so glad you came on here today. Everybody's getting great gems from this podcast episode. And if you have, make sure to tag us on Instagram at Michelle L. Thames and let me know what were the gems dropped in today's podcast? What did you learn today? Did you learn something new? I hope that you're always learning something new here on the Social Media Decoded podcast. So now is one of my favorite sections of the podcast, books. I love books. I have an extensive book collection. I know y'all can't see it, but it's like very extensive. And my Audible is very, very extensive with some books. And so were there any books or resources that helped shape the businesswoman you are today? And if so, what were those books that you can share with us? <laughs> Oh my gosh. So many books. Uh, before I hopped on here, I actually looked at my audible. So I'm, I'm with you. Like I just have so many. And I think that that actually should be the number one takeaway. I will list some books, but I think the takeaway should be just consume a lot of books. Like it sounds silly, but, but that's for real. <laughs> you know, I mean, anytime I'm on a hike, walking the dog, getting ready in the morning, even when I shower, I'm listening to either an audiobook or a podcast. Um, and it's funny. Sometimes I'll click on one where I'm like, I don't even think this is going to be, you know, and then I'm like, wow. Like I, it, it, sometimes it just sparks your thoughts to think of some new cool ideas for your business. So 
always be learning for sure. So for me, I would say the top books that really shaped me, uh, and some of these are pretty old because, you know, I started my business, uh, my online business in 2014. The first book I ever bought for my online business was called Pro Blogger by Darren Rouse. And, you know, if you don't want to get into blogging, you know, don't read it, but it essentially teaches you how to be a blogger, how to monetize your blog. And it was life changing for me. I had no idea that I could make money from blogging. And then lo and behold, I grew an education business, you know, that was way larger than even just blogging. So it was a cool stepping stone. But my number one favorite book, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And the reason I love that book, and I've, I've read it so many times. Like I read it when I first started. I've I read it last summer. I read it over and over and over. It just, it keeps me grounded because there's a lot of people out there giving advice on scaling these massive teams and buying this super expensive blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's just not the life that I personally want. So I, I almost like to use for our work week to like remind myself that it's like, no, I want to have the time freedom. I want to have the, you know, low maintenance team, you know? So, um, that's really it. And then more recently, um, so dot-com secrets by Russell Brunson got me into like funnels and stuff. So that's a good one. And then a hundred million dollar offers is a newer by Alex Hermosi. Yeah. I was in, um, Russell's inner circle with him. And it's been so crazy seeing his whole journey. And he literally went from like zero to a million YouTube subscribers in like two years. But, but that book, it's so small. And I feel like that's almost kind of like the lesson that I talked about sort of with model call is like the $100 million offers. I mean, I don't know how many pages, but it's thin, but it's packed with value. It's almost like a roadmap to how to create a really good offer. And, and I mean, he could be charging for it, even though I think he really doesn't, but, um, that's how you create a good product. Oh, that hundred million dollar offers is a, it's a good book. Please read it. It's a good book. <laughs> I also love the four hour work. Read good book. Read it. Make sure y'all, man, hundred million offers though. You are so right. I like have to go back and keep reading it because it's like in that book, he says, you have to make an offer so good. People will be like, they'll be crazy to say no to it. And so when I was, when I read that, I'm like, you're right. They would be crazy to say no to this juicy offer that you have. So please read those books. Thank you so much for sharing those. Those were awesome. And yes, I'm just like you always listen to a podcast, you know, you can walk the dog for breakfast, you know, while you're working all the things. So I definitely have, <laughs> I'm definitely with you on all the audible and all the, the books that we have to read, but always stay reading. I love that. Absolutely. So yeah, with this is, oh. I was just sorry. I was just going to share with the hundred million dollar offers, what you said, create an offer so good, you know, people can't say no to it or whatever. I also took that a step further where I'm like, I create an offer so good that I'm almost annoyed at how, how much I'm giving away, you know? And I think, and that, it, when I feel that, that's when it always sells like crazy. So anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Like, I love offers and I'm going to look, I've, like I said, I've been taking notes today. So we're, we're going to, we're going to get these digital products off the ground. So I hope that everyone's gotten so many tips that now you have no excuse not to go and put out this digital product or course because Molly has gave us the blueprint. So we thank you for that. Oh, this has been such a great episode and I'm so grateful for you for coming on and dropping so many gems. But before we head out today, I would love for you to let the listeners know where can they find out more about you? What social platforms are you hanging out on and how can we learn more about your business? Yeah. So yeah, this has been super fun and I would love to connect with you guys more. My website is freedomcreator.co and I have so many freebies on there. I have funnel templates, you know, and they're, oh, they're all free. So funnel templates, welcome email scripts, uh, Canva templates for eBooks and digital products, tons of stuff on there. So go check that out. And then YouTube's my main platform. It's just my name, but I do hang out on Instagram and uh, TikTok as well. And yeah. I'm sure other places, but those are the main ones. <laughs> yes. And we will make sure that we put all of that in the show notes so you can connect with Molly and get those amazing freebies because people don't give away really good freebies. And when you find a good freebie, you should download it. Not only download it, use it, execute on the things that you download and get from other people. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thanks for having me. This was really fun.
Yes, thank you so much again. And you all, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Social Media Decoded Podcast. If you love today's episode, take a moment and go to Apple or Spotify and leave the Social Media Decoded Podcast a rating or review. Each rating or review helps us to get heard by more people and make sure that you follow the Social Media Decoded Podcast. The button no longer says subscribe. If you notice that it says follow, so click that follow button and get updated every single time that we drop a new episode, which is three times a week. So thank you all so much for tuning into today's episode and I will talk to you all in the next one. Peace.